So, Thin Ice. This one, I do have a little bit of trivia first that I'd like to just quickly get out of the way before I begin my evaluation of this episode. There is actually another story within Doctor Who canon, if you look at it kind of in an off way, there is actually another storyline called Thin Ice. See, back in the 1980s, they had a story planned for the Seventh Doctor and his companion Ace, played by Sophie Aldred, in the 1980s called Ice Time. This episode was set to show Ace's departure from the Doctor in order to join the Pridonian Academy on Gallifrey, and was also set to include Ice Warriors and a motorcycle gang wearing ice wearing helmets similar to the Ice Warriors. The story was sadly never made due to Dot Hook's cancellation in 1989, but was eventually picked up by Big Finish Productions and made into an audio play called Thin Ice. Yeah, a little bit of trivia for you. Something I thought was interesting. Anyway, The Thin Ice of 2017. The Doctor takes his companion, Bill, to 1814, to the Frost Fair. It's really to 1814, they end up attending the Frost Fair, where there are a load of different people, and they soon come across a gang of pickpockets, but soon discover that there's something lurking under the ice, dragging people down and seemingly eating them, and that Lord Sutcliffe is controlling the creature and is attempting to feeding people to it in an attempt to harvest what it is excrement that can be used as a form of fuel. So, yeah, it, it's quite a dark story, but they managed to do it very well. I mean, it still captures the fun of an uh, of early si of early in the series or two, but it also combines mystery, and I feel that's a good road to take. It it throws us in with something that needs to be figured out, and also gives us a rather satisfying ending. I mean, the villain, just from his first his first few lines, you're not going to feel any pity for this guy. But it also does make you question the Doctor Who ethical side, as Bill asks the Doctor how many people he's killed, or if he's ever killed anyone, and he doesn't give us a straight answer. We as the audience know the answers, not all of them, but we know the Doctor has killed before. And so it does make you feel bad for her as well. I mean, in terms of uh, Lord Sutcliffe and the 19, no, the 1814s and the kind of racist views at the time, is, once again, they only touch on that very briefly. And I feel like human nature, it it's done such that the the remarks look out of time and we accept that things have changed. I don't mean to offend anyone and just he kept it very way in a very good way and the doctor does when he punches Lord Sutcliffe, I think that's something that most of us, most of the good people, would actually want to do to him. <laughs> I mean, as I said, his death at the end, when the ice cracks and Lord Sutcliffe falls through, that, you're not going to feel any compassion for that guy. I mean, the guy who played him was brilliant, but just, no, you're not going to feel anything for that guy. Just when the creature sw swims off, finally swims off free down the Thames. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that makes you feel good, that the Doctor and Bell didn't have to kill the creature, they just have to... I mean, the guy who was keeping it prisoner, he's dead, but... Yeah, th they let it go, and it's kind of cr cry of freedom, yeah. But then the episode also brings up a rather kind of dark and sinister point. Uh, well, rather dark and sinister ending, with Nardole at the very end. What's the knocking? What's inside that safe? What's inside that vault? I mean, I've seen people who think it's Missy in there, but I don't know. My best guess is that it's the Mondation Cybermen. But then why would the Doctor be keeping them down there? 
It's a mystery wrapped in an enigma that is locked in a vault. We're just going to have to see the time. Anyway, we're all been, we've all been on thin ice this week. And next week may discourage you from telling knock-knock jokes. I'm going to say for now. See ya.